Ah, siap. Dah. Okey. Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, ISEL 2023. My name is Prema Chandra and I am the Academic Chair of ISEL 2023. And I will be serving as the moderator for the session. Before we begin, I have a few housekeeping notes. Please mute your mobile phones during the presentation. If you have any questions for the presenter, please yeah. raise your hand okay, okay. I'll I'll call call. of the presentation to post your questions. Please welcome Wen Di Lo Tao, who will be speaking to us on using online tools for continuous assessment in English class. Everyone, yes, um, yeah, it's my honor to be here on a very yes, beautiful Sunday. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry, Monday. Yeah, and um, today I would like to talk about the topic using online tools for continuous assessment in English classes. Um, uh, my name is Nguyen Si So, as you can see in the slide, and I come from Faculty of Applied Linguistics. Um, it is in uh, international school and it belongs to Vietnam National University Hanoi. In this presentation, I will give to you an overview of our school. And um, I will try to find out what online tools I use for continuous assessment in life in my classes, and then how we can use these online tools for continuous assessment. And also I give you some suggestions. So the first one is an overview of our school. So I come from Vietnam National University Hanoi, that is uh, VNU, and then we have international school, that is a member of VNU Hanoi, and it's a VNU IRAC. And at our school, we offer undergraduate and graduate postgraduate training program. And uh, with our program, the degrees can be awarded by VNU or any foreign partner university. And we have a foreign partner university from US, Malaysia, UK, and many others. And at the NUS, we have the program which the degree awarded by DMD, and also degree awarded by our partners. And our training programs are conducted in foreign languages and mostly English. Yeah. Then in my classes, I often use online tools. So what online tools I use? So in this one, the first tool that is interactive online worksheet. So what is that? That is uh, interactive worksheet, or you can say interactivity. These are made with educational apps that take PDF worksheet and convert them into engaging digital materials which can be delivered online to the students. And the second tool that I use that is Google Links. As you can see, this is a web address that can point to a file or a folder which can be stored in Google Drive. And how? How can these online tools be used in my classes? The first one, in order to use the interactive online worksheet, the teacher needs to use a search engine, and you can use Google, and you can type the keywords, live worksheet, together with the keywords, and then you can see the list of the link, and you can click on the link. That you can decide whether it's suitable or not suitable to be used in your classes. And if it is suitable, you can copy the link and you can send it to the student. For the student, they can go to the link and they can do the task provided in the link. And after finishing the link, they can click on finish. And then they have two options. The first one, you can check the answer, or they can email the teacher. When they check the answer, the score will appear immediately, and they can see the right and wrong answer marked very clearly with different colors. And when they choose to email the answers to the teacher, so the score will be sent to the teacher. And you can see some of my examples. 
Here I see, for example, I have this name practice worksheet to my students. And then you can see, yeah, you can see the link. Yeah, and then when you click on the link, you can finish the test. Yeah, these are some examples how they can be used in my class. And after they click on finish, yeah, the result and the score will appear. For example, 8 out of 10 or 7 out of 10. With the correct answers, they have the red color. Uh, sorry, with the correct answer, they have the yeah, green color. And for the wrong answers, they have the, the red one. So they can see how many correct answers they have gained in this worksheet, right? In this, this two minutes. And then when we have these interactive online, we can use in combination with Google Link. So how it is used. So for Google Link Drive, the teachers can create a folder uh, and they use it for the folder's name is often the name of the class without each other. And then I can share the effect of these folders, of this link to the student in my class. And then my students, they go to the link and they upload the photos of the worksheet they have finished and then they put it in different subfolders. When the sent, when the results are sent, so the teachers can know all the students who have finished and who haven't finished the task, and they can follow the results and the scores of the students day by day. Yes. You can yes, see many examples. So for example, I have the link and I share it to my students. So in the link, I have a folder. The folder contains a lot of subfolders, and each subfolder's name is the name of one student. And inside the folder's name, I have different types of other information like the week or the name of the class or the day. And then after the semester, I can see the, the list. You can see six out five. Yeah, I have a list of component like for all of the tasks or the links that I have sent in the semester. And when I need to find out how gradually my uh, students can improve, whether they have improved a lot or uh, not a lot. And I can give them some kind of uh, assessment such as continuous and uh, such as uh, attendance and participation, such as uh, mini test one, mini test two. And after one semester, I have a collection of so many results. And if I have seen no improvement in the student's uh, grade or score, I can give them many other, maybe, uh, extra materials or I can give them some supporting materials so that they can improve the score. And you can see yeah, after maybe one semester, maybe eight weeks or even 15 weeks, I have a collection of the score for the students. Maybe three scores for one week or even more than that. So I believe that if I use it gradually, I can check the student's improvement. And I use it normally for the following year. Yeah, I can see using this one brings about a lot of benefits for the teachers. For example, you can save a lot of time preparing the lesson, and then it can also increase the student excitement. Uh, when you have interactive online worksheet, the student can uh, do with this exercise and also like play games. And then after they finish the task, you can know immediately whether they have the high or the low score. Also, when you use these interactive worksheets, you can increase the student autonomy. You just give them the link and then you walk around. And you can see whether they are doing it or not, and you don't need to explain anything until they have finished all the tasks and you can see the score. And then you can spend time explaining what's wrong with the answer, which one is not true. And then the next one, I can see another the benefit of using these tools. That is, I can improve students' technological skills, especially when we have online lessons during COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, for me, I have been used it for teaching vocabulary, reading, listening skills. And I think it's suitable for both online and online classes. Um, one thing that I need to remind the teachers that is, teachers should check the link carefully uh, before you send it to the students. Because some links may be they are too difficult for our students. Um, you can use your own PDF or your own worksheet using another website. 
you can use the available one or you can create your own post in order to make your lesson suitable to the student. And uh, if you use this one, you can increase the student's uh, involvement in the class and it's really convenient. And for me, when I teach any skills, uh, I often find the list of links which are suitable for the subject. And then I mark it for each unit. For example, when I teach master leader, you know, this one, you can use it for English, right? And business English in general. So when I use market leader, I use uh, different units. And each unit, I have the list of uh, links. And when I have the lesson for each unit, I send it to the student. So if you spend time preparing the lesson before you go to class, and then you have the list of links. And when you go to class, it's very convenient. You can send it to the student. Maybe you can use it in online and offline class too. So these are some ideas that I have used. So I use two tools for my uh, classes. The first one is the live push it, and the second one is Google Drive. And I think that this one you can use to improve the, yeah, the student progress by looking at the list of score of component assessment items in my semester. Okay, so uh, these are all that I want to share, and uh, I actually, yeah, due to the um, number of slides, you know, so I can uh, maybe summarize briefly what I have done to my classes, and I really want to share the experience of using these tools for other teachers. And if you have any other uh, ways to use them, or other methods, other apps, or websites, I hope that I can receive uh, the ideas from you. Thank you for listening. About his own. Yes. So, the things that the way I and how how can we improve it so that this tool can be used more effectively? Yeah. When you look Yeah, the list of students. I have the list of students. In my class, I have 35 students, so I have 35 subsoldiers. So the student name, that is the student, the name of the folder. And then when we open each folder, we have the, these results, you can see. For example, student A, they are going to have the day, different day, different results, different day. So after each semester, I have quite a lot of links, quite a lot of photos of the results of the link. And then I put it in an Excel file. Yes, for example, if I have maybe 20 questions in that is slide, so I convert it to the percent. If it didn't have uh, 10 correct questions out of 20, so I put it here, week one, day one, and out of 20, that is 50%, so I convert it to five. And then for each day, for each link, I have yes, the result of the whole class in this way. Yeah. So that is uh, how I conducted yeah, using the Google link and the live worship. And for each class, I have this link and this subfolder. Yeah. And I ask the students, please send the photo of the link uh, uh, following my deadline. I set the deadline for my students. And for example, student A, I will give them the, the time, maybe 5 p.m. Monday, and after 5 p.m. I will close the link, and then they cannot send the result anymore. So in that way, I can see who is, yeah, who has submitted and who hasn't submitted. Yeah. That is how I uh, do this design. And then uh, one another way, that after the semester, when I have collection of the scores, and, and I can see the students' progress, you can see. Maybe week one, day one, they have maybe 50% for example. Until week 15, day three, they have maybe 60 or 70. So I can know the progress of each student. Yeah. But this one, no, but this part is rather con uh, consuming. You need to open the folder of each student. And then you can count 
how many preferences uh, out of the total one, and then you convert it into percent. So that you have the data to put in each column that's from the top consuming. But I can check the student's program and I can know what is the problem with my students. For example, when I teach IL listening skills and I send the link to the student, for uh, part one, they are really good at part one. So normally they get maybe seven or three percent of correct answer. But when I move to part two, maybe only three, uh, 30 or 40 percent. So I know that for part two, they are not really good at they have problems with listening part two. So I spend more time practicing and give them more chances to practice part two. So yeah, I try to look at how they progress because I have quite a lot of data from the Excel file. Yeah, I have the results of the bushes for every task, for every day. And I put it in the total file this way. Yeah, and when I teach other skills like vocabulary, I often use the bushes in order to make it interactive. And I think it's really convenient, and the students love it. So when I send the link to the students, they will spend time doing it, I will spend time. And then when they finish the task, they finish the task, I will check and ask them to upload the photo, the photo of the results into the folder. Or I can it in the meeting chat box if I use the next team in all our classes. So when I look at that, I know that some students uh, have the same mistake. Yeah, maybe 35 students, but for question B, all of them have wrong answers. So I will explain, you know, why do you have the wrong answers for question B? Yeah, so I try to find out the common mistake for all of my students, and then try to explain it. Yeah. And for students with good results, I, I can ask them to explain to the partner or to the classmates why you do it and why you don't do it. Yes, that's the way I use this uh, interactive tool for my lesson. And it, uh, I can use it in another way like this one. When I, I have the link sent to the student, I ask the student to go in groups and then I give them the prize. So which group has the most correct answers in the shortest time? And then the, the group will uh, maybe receive any gift from me. So I try to make the class competitive and fun. So that can make the student maybe more excited and more involved with the lesson. So uh, I think that uh, you can use this uh, way in many ways. So trying to make the class interactive, trying to get the student involved in the lesson, and also know whether they have much or less progress when learning and practicing. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that you can have um, you can have understanding how I use these tools. And um, one more thing that I want to share that is uh, you can use this interactive worksheet in two ways. The first one, you can use the ready made one. You can use the ready made one by using Google search engine. You can use live worksheet plus the keyword, and then they can have a list of the link appear. And the second way, you can create your own interactive worksheet. You have a website, you can create the own worksheet. So when you have, you can create your worship, you can customize the link to the lesson content. Yeah, you can do what the student have learned in the last lesson, and you can use them to create their own worship. So uh, I think that it is suitable. Yeah, it is easy and not too complicated for the teacher. Yeah, it's simple. And then when you have the account, you can create your own worship. And then you can customize it, and then you send the link to the student. And when you send the link to the students, they don't need to apply to the lock in, and then it's very clear. So just click on the link, and then the task will appear. And then they can follow the task, and then finish it. And then right after they click on click, finish, they can have the results, like in my uh, example. Yeah. This one you can see. Yeah, right after I send it, so I send time, and then the student will give me the feedback. Yeah, this is the link that I used, and it is the task in the link. And when the students click on finish, yeah, they will get the result. Yes, eight, seven, nine, or ten. So uh, when I use this one, I can see that um, I have to spend time choosing the right available worship, or I can have to uh, I have to spend time designing my own worship. But it is good for my students. Really interesting. Yeah, I can use it uh, many ways. Yeah, and sometimes the 
The link that I can find is totally suitable with the content I gave them in the last lesson. But sometimes it's not because it is too, maybe too difficult. So I have to customize these bushes by designing my own one. And when I can design my own one, I can use it for a long time, not only one. It's just a link and I can send a link to many, many students, many, many classes, not only one. So in short, you have two ways you can use. The first one, using the ready made one. But you need to choose carefully. The second, you can create your own worship yeah, by using the website. And then you can customize the content in the worship. And then just send it to the students. And they will give you the instant feedback. That is right. And then my uh, suggestion is we can use these uh, online worship for teaching, reading, yeah, listening, and also vocabulary, but not for writing. Yeah, for writing, I, I don't suggest it. But for the other three, it is suitable. For listening to you, they can even see back the audio file into the bullshit. And when they click on that uh, audio, they can listen to the sound while they are finished, the sound is very easy. And um, the next thing is when you go to the class, you need to prepare a list of the worship. For example, part one IELTS, you have a list of worship listening for IELTS part time, for example. Uh, for ESP class, topic number one, you need to have the list of the worship. Topic number two, you have the list of worship. So they are available. And they can be used when you need it, when convenience. So let's spend time preparing, choosing, and designing the worship before class. Then you can use it again and again. But if you do not spend time you know, designing and choosing the worship, sometimes there may be some mistake in the worship. So the student may question it. Yeah, why is it right, not wrong? So um, the next thing that I want to mention is there are many ways you can assess the student in a continuous way. But I I try to continue I try to find out the score as many as possible so that I can know actually what is the right level of my student. Yes, when I have the Excel file, we have a lot of score, yes, I can see that some students they just they are just good at one part of the lesson or one a certain field, but not all. So when I look at this one, I can give them the suitable material. For example, like I said before, when I have the IELTS listening test, some students ask me, "Yeah, uh, part three is really difficult for me, but part one and part two are okay. So please send me more links, more exercises of part three. So I send those links to that student only." And the, what about the whole class? I can use them, but I don't. I, I can send certain links to different students, not at one the same. If they have different requirements, or different have different difficulties. Yeah, so I can be flexible when sending the student the material. Yeah, and I think that when you use this one, you can use it uh, in another way. This, uh, when you choose the link, yeah, and you can decide the link, you can use the whole material. Yeah, customize. Yeah, and for the link, you can embed not only the text, also audio and video too. Yeah, video too. You can embed a, a video into the link, and then you can give them a certain prompt. Please watch the video and fill in the gap, for example. Or you can say, please watch the video and then answer the following question. So it is really easy. When you convert it into the PDF file, then you change it into the live worship link. So we can use text, audio, video, and quite a lot of other uh, ways to use this one. So um, that is from my own experience of using online tools like uh, the Worship and also the Google Ring Drive for my classes. And uh, I really hope that uh, the experience that I have shared is useful to you. And uh, if you have anything that you can share or you can tell me, so uh, I'm uh, really willing to listen. Yes. And if you have any questions, that you
So um, when I choose the materials for my students, for example, I design basing on the content is the last lesson. For vocabulary lesson, I will customize the worksheet. I will test the word that they have learned in the last lesson by designing interactive exercises like gesturing, matching, explaining the underlined words. But for uh, other skills like listening, I also I can choose the verbal one. Yeah, that is um, I can spend them maybe three things. For listening, I also have one. Yeah. Sometimes using the resume and sometimes customizing it in terms. For 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 reading, for example, for reading, if the topic uh, or if the link I have that is to the topic that they have learned, so I use the ready made one. But if the topic is not suitable, I will use my own project. I customize you know, with the topic and the words they have learned with um, the book, the textbook. So I think you should be flexible, deciding uh, what you have. So if you can find anything which is totally suitable for the um, specific content, so it's lucky, so just do it. But if the link you can find is not suitable, you have to customize, you have to design your own version. Yeah. That's the way I did. Yeah. Any other question? Any question? Uh, do you use that or do you use yeah. other ways you can uh, you can tell me or you can share your own experience? Yeah, like 20 days to check it. 
that somehow think we change the way we serve the students. Not the final exam, the MCQ or two or four, we use the final seven. And we try to give them an open book of um, topics. But we use the checking system, yeah, anti plagiarism checking system. Yeah, and you have to tell them that it is a very uh, smart yeah, um, app. And then if they uh, are committed with plagiarism, we get zero. So we yeah, strictly follow that uh, rule. And then they can be more serious with the uh, doing assignments or uh, exam. Yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, yeah. so to, to divide it, I think it's reliable. Yeah, they cannot, they cannot change the screen. Because uh, when they are using this screen and they move it to another one, you can see it immediately. And then zero immediately. So, yeah, we use it in the last two years. Yeah, that's what we did at our school. Yeah? <laughs> no, because students, students, you inform the student two weeks before the study exam. That in this uh, exam, you need to, you need to have two. Just normally they have the laptop for learning, and the smartphone now is very available. Yes, it's, it's easy, not too difficult. Or they have two system where with you can access the internet easily. Yeah, require the internet two weeks before the exam. So just have to prepare. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your listening. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Lee, for your sharing session. So, uh, with that, our session for this evening has come to an end. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.